Oh, paragraphs. <laughs> um, so we heard a lot about paragraphs at DrupalCon this year. Um, let's see if I can just like look this up. And uh, I, I probably went to at least three or four sessions about paragraphs, and I know, and those were like technical ones, and I know they went to non-technical ones about paragraphs. So um, there was there's just like a lot of information about how people are using paragraphs, um, the paragraph module to make more dynamic uh, pages and like a better experience for content creators. So really the idea is making stuff easy to use for people who write stuff for the website, right? Um, and so the flip side to how paragraphs works is how we do it. We do everything in the WYSIWYG. So we have WYSIWYG um, widgets and components and things like that. And it's all using JavaScript and um, the CK editor widget plugins and things like that. Um, but that can get confusing because sometimes, like, even despite how much control you try and put into these widgets, A, they take a long time to build because JavaScript is weird. Um, they don't always work the way you want them to work and they're not easily configurable. If I need to change the way a plugin works, a CK editor plugin works, I have to go in and, like, write some JavaScript and change that plugin and, like, I can't easily make variations of that plugin, I have to make whole new plugins, right? I can't just go in and flip a switch and like make it work better. Um, so, and then also it can get confusing for content editors because if they don't understand HTML, sometimes updates break the WYSIWYG because it's so simple um, and that can be a problem. A big thing you also hear about how you're organizing content or uh, like data in your website is that you want to not necessarily put everything in one field, like how we do it, we put everything in the body field. A lot of other websites or a lot of um, at least content publishers, what they're doing, they're breaking their content up into multiple components so then you can extract those out individually and repurpose them for other needs, right? Um, so that's, if I were to take a landing page and I put all the landing page components, we had like, a title, uh, a leader text, we had another section for like an image, and we had another section with like um, an FAQ and then whatever else. I can't take that content and like pull in just the FAQ section and like another thing. If I were gonna like do an email listing, I would have to rewrite that content and I couldn't just tap into other sources. So what Paragraphs does is it lets you help break those, uh, that data up or that content up into multiple pieces of content that you can repurpose uh, and that's kind of what the idea is. Um, it's also really structured in where in which there are permissions um, that you can uh, allow content editors to use. So uh, this is the gist, uh, the gist is just a paragraph module and what it does is that you're basically making many content types um, or what they call bundles, uh, uh, paragraph bundles. So a bundle is basically a content type, and it might look familiar. If you've ever used the field collection module, it looks very similar. Um, the difference is that field collection blows, <laughs> and it's not, uh, it's not as uh, supported as Paragraphs. Paragraphs is also in Drupal 8, uh, like most of the sessions we're talking about in Drupal 8 um, had to do with the Paragraphs module. Uh, there's a company that made uh, a Paragraph demo site, so this whole entire site was built on paragraphs, so you can see each section is a paragraph. Um, this slideshow is a paragraph. Uh, then there's this content section with paragraph, and you can see it has a different background. Um, you have this other paragraph. And these are all modules you can use uh, with paragraphs. So paragraph pack basically just gives you uh, some pre-bundled bundles, pre-bundled bundles, um, uh, so you don't have to like generate your own. Uh, classy paragraphs lets you add classes to your paragraphs, which I will show you. Um, edgy uh, lets you do like the full width edge to edge, which actually uh, you don't necessarily need that. I think it's more for panels, more or less. Um, I actually use something. I, I don't think I actually needed it, but I did use it. Um, entity background didn't really work for me. It's kind of confusing, so I used something else. Um, and then there are just some other modules you can use. Uh, a lot of the stuff Paragraphs does works with Display Suite, so anything you can do with Display Suite, you can do in Paragraphs. Um, and so I'm going to show you what we did. So if you look at this data cert web page, um, this whole thing was built uh, using Paragraphs right here, right? Um, and let me refresh this page really quick. In like 10 minutes. Yeah, it didn't take very long to do. 
uh, like getting the the stuff set up takes a little bit of lead time, but in order to like actually create like start creating content, it's not hard at all. And this is still running on OE Pro. Uh, well, this is data certs old OE, so it is it's OE, it's but of yeah, OE. but it's not really doing anything special with OE. Um, but you can see that uh, every section looks a little bit different than the one before it. Um, this one even has a slideshow built in, so we did some magic. Um, using like flex slider and uh, like a field collection with that just to make it easy for content editors. Um, so what does this look like? So to begin with you have um, paragraph bundles. So in this case I created three different bundles. Um, there's a content bundle which is basically just basic content, title, body field, and CTA button. Right? Um, then there's a view bundle. So views is really only used for uh, at the very bottom, we have this section of experts corner. So this is a title, a body field, and then you can embed views as like a field, right? Um, which we're using a, a field embed view module. Um, then there's a testimonial uh, bundle, which is mostly to display the slideshow testimonials. Um, I could create like slideshow, but I'd this is like very specific because if I wanted to have like images and stuff, that would change how the paragraphs work. So, but for this case, this is all it is. Um, so you can tell it looks just like a content type. You manage fields, you manage display, you can edit the bundle, um, you can delete it. All these are managed through features as well. So you can capture it in the feature and move it up, turn it on, and it creates all the bundles. Um, in the content case, we have five fields, uh, title, body, link, which is like a CTA link, um, class, which has, has to do with if you want to add classes to your your paragraph wrappers, um, and then a background image in the case that you want to add a background image, which this, this is like the one part I'm still working on. Um, but other than that, all the other bundles, we just reuse the fields, um, so we don't have to create new fields, just like normal content types. But if you look at testimonial, you can see we're still using field paragraph title, which is in content, field paragraph body, etc. So we're just kind of like making generic fields for the purpose of paragraphs. You could reuse other content type fields. That's totally fine. But um, in the in the sense of packaging it and features, I wanted to keep them all separate and independent. So you can I could actually take this, throw it on another website, and turn it on, and it would create these bundles on those websites. So um, for example, let's just take a look at um, the manage display on the. We're actually going to look at. Uh, the content one instead. Um, so, uh, just like uh, any other display suite thing, um, this one has two different view modes. We have a default view mode and then we have a background image view mode. Uh, by default, um, you get title body link and then there's a little class section up here which is disabled. And I'll show you what that looks like when we start adding content. Other than that, exactly the same. It just looks like display suite. There's nothing different, uh, just like working with content types. Now, the way we add classes is that we're using this module called um, Classy Paragraphs. Uh, there is a um, there is a uh, not it's not in Drupal.org. Someone put it on GitHub called Classy Paragraphs UI. So this module by itself doesn't actually do anything. Um, so actually, if you look at, there's this thing that says install class paragraphs UI, which actually goes to GitHub. It's not on Drupal. Um, like if you want to interface. So there's actually an issue open for it. I had written a patch for it um, that actually creates, like helps embed the module inside of the other module, and it works better. So um, we would get the, an interface that looks like this. So this was my patch. That I have written for um, the stuff. So, what it looks like is if you go to config, content authoring, classic paragraphs UI, uh, you now have a list of classes you can add that you want to repurpose for those paragraphs. Right? Uh, so, you can also define them, um, you can define classes via hook system, so, which is pretty simple. I can just write a single hook for like an enterprise, uh, open enterprise module, and say, use these classes for paragraphs, and then they will populate in a list below. So if I look at um, something like this, uh, 
Let's see some magic. Well, that's my favorite part. <laughs> Command line over here. <laughs> there it goes. Oh, I think it's sort of a classic. So they even have like a little readme that says if you want to implement a hook, there it is. So I'm actually going to find that function. Copy and paste this. And we're going to go into our, just like, this is like a standard feature module. So I'm just going to replace this bro. Um, so one of the, the big part of my my patch was uh, it didn't tell you what other modules implemented um, like implemented classes so like they would just show up but you didn't know where they came from so what my patch also does is creates a little table that shows you all the classes that were Im implemented by hooks like they were written in code um, so you're not just like where are these coming from um, so now if I look at this classic paragraphs UI. You should see <clears throat> there's a section below. Now called classes added via hook, uh, classic paragraphs list options. So it, now you can see what other classes are available and you know where they came from and stuff like that. Um, yeah. They add it like on the section blue, I guess. Oh, add it, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I'm going to go back to the, the dev demo. Um, you can edit any of the sections, and this is basically what it looks like. What does the class name look like whenever it gets rendered? And then what is the, um, like the regular names, so like when you see in a list of options, what does it look like? And then that's it. It's super simple. Um, that's how you generate classes. But in the programming sense, I can go in and uh, right here, I can basically generate like a bunch of like bootstrap classes. So if you wanted to do like a bunch of weird bootstrap stuff, instead of having to remember what those classes are, I can just generate a list of classes. Um, and then those will be available for people to use on paragraphs. Right? Uh, and there are two ways you can display it, but let's actually add a new page with paragraphs. Um, so what we're going to do is that we had to do something specific in the in theming because it doesn't just work. Like you have to configure the theme a little bit to work for like full with stuff, right? Um, so uh, a basic page works like normal. So we can just say um, demo paragraph page and you can there's still a body field, so you can type stuff in here if you want. You don't have to. Um, there's is that art editor or is that? It's CK editor, but they wanted CK it blue because data sure it's blue. doesn't matter. <laughs> um, but then below, there's a section called paragraphs. So paragraphs is a single field on a content type, right? So if you were to add a field to a content type, you're just going to add a paragraphs field, right? So I would just say uh, paragraphs. And then there is a paragraphs field, and you only need one paragraph field. This just says implement paragraphs here, right? And then in that section, you can add as many paragraphs as you want, right? Um, so we're going to add a content paragraph. We're going to give it a title. We're going to give it some demo stuff. Um, I'm going to give it a CTA link, so I'm going to call this like click here now. now. And this URL, it's just a link field, so you can either do an absolute URL like google.com or you can do a relative URL like about us, which hooks into a Drupal system. And then here are the classes that show up from the other interface. So um, if I do section green and text center, it's going to center all the text in that area for me and it's also going to give it a background, a green background. Um, if I were to upload a background image, I could use the background image view mode and then it would render it as a background image on that element. Um, cool. But it's kind of 
it's kind of janky the way it works with um does it crop it or no what? no it'll well you have to style it um all the module does is applies a background image as a url to an element um so you do like if you want it to be like full width or background size contain or whatever um you still have to write that in theming but uh, in this case you only like we're only worrying about the interface for it um, then I can go ahead and add another paragraph. So I want to do a testimonial. So in the testimonial section, um, you get kind of like a field, like a, a field collection. So I can do uh, slide one. Uh, there's some stuff in there, and then button one. Then I can add another slide, and this is still one paragraph. So slide two some stuff but two let's add a third one just because we're awesome Side three thing button three and then uh, let's give it I get blue um, and then I don't think this has to do with anything. Uh, then let's just do a view for fun. Now the view one is a little, uh, it's just how view fields are implemented. Um, you just have to know what view you're looking for. So um, I can still add another view section. Let's give it some demo content. And then you just select the view you want. Um, in this case, I know that this is going to be the expert corner grid, uh, the block display. Um, you can add arguments if you want. So like if, if you're passing in like a contextual filter of some kind, uh, you can do that. In this case, I don't really care. Um, so let's do this actually. Let's do you green. By the way, is that weird that you can apply multiple classes? Because it, would it be just the inner nested one? No, so a class is just like, I'll show you what happens. It's a section, blue section, green. Yeah. I'll so, that's, so you have to make your stuff descriptive, right? So like you want a blue section or a green section or I want the text to be centered or things like that. Like you could have like 100 classes in here. That's not good per se. Um, but if you need more than one class, you can do it this way. There's also a way to change the widget that instead of uh, checkboxes, it's a select list. Um, and then you're only selecting one at a time. So, but in this case, we want it to look like this. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and publish this page and I'm gonna tell you right now, it's not gonna look right because there's one more thing you have to do um, on the edit page. But I want you to see the page first to understand the Im implications of making sure your theming works right. All right. So we have a bunch of sections. Uh, it's, so it's like a pretty decent landing page if you wanna build a landing page, but you can see it doesn't go edge to edge, right? Um, and this has to do with the page template and the theme you're using. So what I did is that we wrote another page template um, to, uh, that's specific for these full width pages. So when you edit the node, you scroll all the way down, at the very bottom there's a thing called display settings. And we're going to change the view mode to edge to edge. And we're going to hit save. Now that's going to change the view mode of this specific node and now you get your edge-to-edge -edge, uh, landing page stuff. So now you get a little slideshow, you get a little view section. And I'm assuming this is all responsive to? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And this site's using Bootstrap too, so some of the responsive stuff is a little weird, but if you were on like a modern framework, it really wouldn't matter. But yeah, everything works fine. And actually, so talking about the multiple classes, if you look at a paragraph section, you can see in here that we're using two classes, section green and text center. So these are getting added um, like from that section. So I can actually change this to right. blue and change that section to blue. And then I have themed these sections to make the stuff change colors based on what's going on. So if I have uh, I have this little thing called section. So a basic section is going to give it a bunch of padding and change the padding of the buttons. 
If you have section gray light, it's going to change the background color to gray and then the button to green. If you have section green, it's going to change the background color to green and the colors, the buttons to white. If it's blue, they're going to be white, etc. and so forth. So now these, whenever you apply these classes, anything, it'll yeah, change them around. Um, so that's basically it. That's what paragraphs does. Um, yeah, so actually the when you're editing a paragraph, um, this module or uh, this view mode switcher down here for each paragraph, this is actually a sandbox module um, that I'm trying to get work. Some people says it worked, but I it doesn't really work by default, um, so I have to do some stuff to it. So uh, this actually usually wouldn't be here, but... Um, it does make it useful for if you want to do like more things like having different view modes for paragraphs and switch them on the fly. So you could have uh, something, you can have a constant one, you can call it like landing page or a teaser or background image or whatever or slideshow and you can literally have one paragraph type and then change it on the fly and it takes the same content that you already had and changes it up and you don't have to do jack, right? So instead of like worrying about what HTML looks like or if this widget's gonna work or oh, it doesn't work on this version of Bootstrap, we need to change the way the JavaScript works or oh, we have to write a new widget plugin. It's like all of these are built using standard Drupal practices and now you have like a little switch that repurposes it for you. So how easy would it be to incorporate paragraphs, I guess the module, it's a module, right? <laughs> into OE Pro as our, within our latest bundle that when we spin up, we could always use paragraphs when we... It's as easy as adding a module and creating paragraph types. That's basically it. Now, it's, it's really uh, how are you using the paragraphs? So are you using it for testimonials and for views or for content or for images or for what? Um, maybe figuring, like looking at different types of landing pages. So if you looked at like like any bootstrap theme and we said um, let's take a gander at this pro and we said okay what if we had a paragraph that did like full width slideshows right or what if we had a paragraph that does um, that does things like this right so it's like one paragraph and you can add as many icon sections as you want, right, and to build out things like this. Or if you wanted to have, like, something like this, where I can add a bunch of images, and then I have, like, a title and some content. Like, there's a lot of, like, basically every section in here could be a paragraph, right? You just have to build it that way. So. And all this would just be inside the same page and not have to, like, change the little like you Yeah, it would, it would be, like, fields on a node. It wouldn't be a single body of text and you have to know HTML to edit it. So it's just literally typing into a box like the words you want to appear and then how you and like how you want it to appear. We'll probably have like one or two more bundles we need to add in. Yeah. So there's a lot of different ways you can use it. Um, and there's actually uh, I've been reading some blog posts lately and the reason I, I considered this for the data cert design was because I saw a blog post called uh, using paragraphs for landing pages. And then, because I saw a couple of posts, but it turns out there's a lot of people doing the same thing. Um, like, they're all talking about using paragraphs to create landing pages. So there's like uh, Evolving Web, um, Provenux, Cheeky Monkey, uh, Drupal Sun, like Webwash, all these other agencies are using paragraphs to create landing pages and that made me think I feel like there's a standard here and we're not doing it <laughs> you know I'm not saying the way we're doing it is wrong yeah. I'm just saying that there could be a better way to do it you know so that's basically just it um, any questions <laughs> I'm just trying to think of various scenarios that you could use them Here's some. Oh yeah, so uh, this is this is unrelated to paragraphs. Um, I I haven't flushed it all yet. I haven't flushed it all out yet. But um, 
Oh, if you. Smells all like good meat. I'm one of you. Um. Okay, so <laughs> I'm gonna show you guys something that's really, really dumb that made me angry when I realized it was built like this. But now we get to fix it, so it's but okay. Now we get to fix it. No, it's gonna be fine. So, so this is the corporate client client's view of uh, data set clients, right? Now, this is a node, but this is not. This is like a block that sits inside the node, right? If I were to click on any of these, these are supposed to be like. Oh, that one didn't work. Um, these are supposed to be like these pop-up modals um, for like testimonials. So like when you click on it, it's supposed to pop up something. So it comes up with this, uh, which is like, that's cool. It does a thing. Um, and then these are links to other pieces of media on the website. So this is like, uh, you can't see it, but it's like a press release. So it's a news release. Um, about this client, right? Or this is a webinar that references this client, or you know, this is a you know a press release for this client, but not a testimonial. If I were to edit this page, it's not editing the client; it's only editing the page this box sits on, and there's like a script because this is super, like, tells me a lot about what's going on, right? You're not supposed to do this. You don't you don't put scripts in nodes. Right, <laughs> there's a process to this, and this is wrong. Um, now it doesn't mean that you can't do it this way. It's just mean it's not the best way or the right way to do it. Now the other the other uh, issue with this is that when you go to edit a client, so if I were to look at this list of clients and I go, oh hey, let's edit the testimonial for Axel Nobel, and we edit it inside the testimonial there's like markup and it's it's like here's we're gonna like manually or statically hard code this URL into the page and so if this URL changes it's gonna break um, and then we're going to write some markup to deal with this modal and we're gonna do all this weird stuff and then it's just like really confusing and you it's a bad way of implementing it, right? So what I'm using is, I was like, okay, how can we break this apart? It's really weird. So what can we do? We need to reference other pieces of content on the website to these nodes, right? I don't necessarily want to do like a node reference or any reference because it can be things that are not any of those, right? Um, and also there's a lot of, like how do I change the way they're displayed uh, because you, <laughs> if I just wanted to show a link, right, the references a press release, I have to make it in any reference, and then I have to reference that thing, and then when it comes in, I have to create a new display mode for that type of reference to just show a link with a title that says a certain word, and like it's not easily configurable. So I was like, okay, how can I link other pieces of content uh, to these things, right? So I found this module called Linkit, um, which is kind of interesting. Um, we'll see how it works. And what it does is that it basically lets you, it'll search your website for content and let you like create links. Like around, like there's like a, a WYSIWYG plugin for it. Um, there's a lot of other things for it. But basically it's like, tell us what you're looking for on your website and we will help you link that back to this page, right? So in this case, what we're doing is that um, I created, uh, you create like a Linkit profile, right? So I have a profile in here um, for publication reference, right? So this specific profile um, is like, it's like rules to how you can link things, right? So we're gonna say, this is going to be used for fields. It's not like not in a WYSIWYG. Um, for the search plugin, we're only going to be searching for content. We're not going to be searching for blocks or users or taxonomy terms, even though you can search for those. If you were using, if you were using the media module, you could look for files as well or menus. Um, so if those menus change, then you can find them. Um, and then we're going to use an alias, the alias for the link. Um, and then if you want to edit different attributes about that link, and then uh, this just only has to do with the autocomplete. So, Overview, we're going to 
use it in fields, we're going to use the uh, content, and also we're going to only look for case studies, expert articles, media coverage, or news releases. We're not going to look through every piece of content on the site. We're going to limit that content editor to only search in these areas, right? So if I am now editing a client, I can do things like this. I can create another item. Actually, I took it back. I already had one. <coughs> I'm going to search for something. So I want to find, in this case, if I was looking for Axe and Nobel, I can start typing it in, and now it found a piece of content where that client is listed. Um, where that client is listed. But these are kind of hard coded for for lack of a better term than dynamic. Like right? So these are gonna, dynamic. Well you're gonna set which ones they're gonna find based on that, right? And that's what you're gonna display. Go ahead and finish doing what you're doing. Okay. <laughs> so uh, and then in this case I can say like uh, refer to this press release. Enter link. So now I have a new link. Um, and that's basically it. And then I can save it. Um, now here's the weird thing about viewing the client nodes, and this is why I'm still fleshing this out, is because there's something happening on the website that seems intentional, that if I were to view an individual client, it just redirects me to the client page. So I can't actually view an individual client right now, but I haven't like worked through why that's happening. I'm assuming there's a hook somewhere saying anytime you view a client, only go to the corporate homepage. Yeah, probably don't find that other little page by itself. Yeah, I don't know. So you can't actually view a client, <laughs> which is why I'm still working on how this is going to work. Um, but if you were to set that URL, right, um, for whatever that piece of content URL is at that point in time. If I were to go to that client and then I change the URL, um, it's going to automatically create a, a redirect to that from that old one to the new one. So even if it is the old one, it will still give it the new one. It will still yeah. make it. It'll make its way to the new one. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking of its use a little bit differently, but I see what you're talking about here and why it has to be a particular link that you're going through. I, I was thinking, actually, I know it's crazy, I was thinking like that re relevancy thing. I was like, oh, you could do that search, but like, and then find all the links different places so it would be more than one. Mm -hmm. Like when you did X, so there could be two or three particular articles on that drop down or something. Yeah. <clears throat> and there is a WYSIWYG plugin for this as well. It's actually not a, a WYSIWYG plugin per se, but it's like a text formatter. Um, so you could use it in the WYSIWYG. You can like look up other pieces of content on your website without having to go and Google or go on your website and find it, and it'll just do it in the box for you. So it's kind of neat. I like that. I like the experience of the no reference because it's like the actual website. Yeah, like you're not like you're not building a database and like making all these relationships. Yeah. You're literally just like finding pieces of content and linking it to this one thing. Yeah. Yeah. Really back to characters. Okay. <laughs> Would you be able to put a web form in there, or would that just be a block? Yeah, well, I mean, that's how you would do it. You would just have a field that you can put a block in. Um, there's probably also a web form field. I wouldn't use it. But, yeah, you could create a block field and then reference a block, and then that would go in there. Just like the views? So yeah. It would be the same as the views, but it would be a block field and stuff. Yeah, you could either do a block field, or you can do it how we use... Um, like how you embed blocks in WYSIWYGs right now, like you could do it that way too. You can put the block in the WYSIWYG and it would show up. So, yeah. So a lot of different ways to do the things. The thing is figuring out what's the best way to do it and then just like making that a standard and then shipping it to everyone. So, that's it. That paragraph is cool. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. It is pretty neat. Yeah. Um, they, uh, so these are some of the other sites. This is probably the most one, the, the best one. So this is a site like how you would realistically use paragraphs or something similar. So you can make nice single page web apps.
Now, like, there's obviously some theming that you have to do for this, but it is totally possible, right? And you don't, and it's all field, like, fieldable. So if you were to look at the markup in here, so this is a single paragraph. And these are, like, additional paragraphs inside of that. So this is a... Each one of these is a different paragraph, right? So this is using um, a parallax image. Uh, this is like using additional classes for uh, secondary background colors. Or this is a, uh, so you can see how it says pack. You guys see this, it says pack hyphen carousel, pack hyphen content, pack hyphen whatever. So this is that paragraphs pack. It like automatically comes with a slideshow pack and a, uh, content pack and image pack and whatever else. So, like, you don't have to write those already there. Yeah. Anyways, it's it's much easier. the The gist is it's easier on content editors. Um, you get to use that content however you want afterwards. So, if you wanted to create customized list of content by using this field and this field and that field, uh, you can do that. You don't have everything shoved into a single HTML block. You so, can you can oh yeah, you can now. you can uh, yeah. I don't know if I showed you guys that, but you can do that. Uh, you can edit a page, and then say say you just want to change the order of those. You don't have to know HTML and where to copy and stop pasting, and you can literally just like go, okay, actually, you know what? I want this one to be last. I want this one to be first, or you can. <clears throat> uh, use drag and drop. It's kind of weird though when you have really big paragraphs though. <laughs> I was doing it yesterday, it was like really slow, so like, and I was like, very slowly, I'm gonna move this. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna make it there eventually. It'll get there, I'm done. But, but yeah, you can just tap the button. So if you guys don't know this trick, um, there's this little thing, and if you click it, it'll change this to an, have an order, and you can just change the order right here. So it's like easier mentally to deal with. So it'll be good for data search because, like, they're they will, we will be rebuilding their landing pages, but a lot of them are going to look pretty similar. So we can 